Hello friends, this is Durga again from IT University and in this video I will be talking more detail in uh, about distributed cache um, and uh, this is uh, this video will actually cover the theory portion of it and as part of the next uh, few videos I will be showing how to uh, accomplish joins or lookups um, by using this concept called distributed cache um, so that data can be looked up or joined um, uh, as part of our MapReduce applications. So before getting into that, uh, let's uh, discuss about uh, job resources. Uh, for this, I am recollecting uh, uh, the MapReduce uh, lifecycle when the job is submitted. Uh, first thing that will happen is when you type Hadoop jar command and hit enter um, on the client node, there will be a JVM uh, which will be created. And that JVM will uh, uh, contact resource manager and it will get the new application ID. And once it gets the new application ID, it will try to copy the job resources into a shared file system. Uh, so this shared file system can be HDFS or, uh, 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 or it, it can be uh, even uh, 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 it can be even on a uh, local file system on each of the nodes. So it need not be NFS or something like that which is a shared file system. It can be local file system also but it will be copied on multiple nodes so that uh, uh, the resources are available uh, for jobs when they run. So uh, typically these uh, files will be copied um, uh, at least uh, uh, 10 times so there will be 10 copies of these files on 10 different nodes uh, so that uh, uh, if uh, um, if the map task or reduce task uh, starts running these resources are available locally or um, on the nodes very close to uh, uh, the node where these processes are running so whenever the map task or reduce task uh, runs as part of the initialization process it will try to copy all the it will actually copy all these resources into the in memory of the map task jvm or the reduce task jvm and then it will uh, uh, start executing the logic uh, that is in there so um, let me open uh, let me open uh, hortonworks sandbox so that i demonstrate where these uh, files will be um, while it is starting, let's go ahead with the slides. I will cover um, uh, and that aspect in a moment. So, theoretically speaking, distributed cache is used for copying files and archives to the task nodes in run uh, uh, task nodes in time, uh, so that they can be used them, uh, so that the tasks such as mappers or reducers can use them when they uh, when they actually run. Uh, so the files can be passed using minus files, minus archives, and minus libjars, and um, those will be copied to the node on which the task is uh, running uh, once the uh, job starts running. They will be stored locally and will be recycled once thresholds are reached. It can be used effectively to join smaller data sets. Uh, not only for joins, if you think about uh, conventional data housing, lookups is quite common. Yeah, so it can be used for lookups also. So you can uh, cache uh, the data that needs to be looked up before uh, taking a subsequent action. That data can be distributed as a distributed cache and the lookup can be performed very effectively as part of map or, or reducer. But one of the use cases where distributed cache comes handy is map set joins, uh, which is analogous to lookups also. Uh, from conventional data warehousing perspective. So these are the important parameters when it comes to YARN. I am covering only from YARN perspective. I am not going to talk about uh, 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 classic. Uh, so um, YARN uh, node manager local cache max files per directory. So whenever you create uh, cache, uh, we are trying to limit the number of files to 8192 by setting the, this parameter. If you want to increase or decrease, you can do that. And uh, yeah, 
node manager local directories is the one which will control the location um, in which the file will be created okay and uh, by default uh, it is slash hadoop slash yarn slash local but you can customize to whatever location uh, whatever path you want you can not only uh, give local path like this you can also give uh, uh, network uh, mount points also um, but uh, that network mount point should be accessible uh, to all the nodes in the cluster uh, and also you can use uh, cloud-based uh, uh, mount points also like uh, means cloud-based uh, file systems also if they are supported uh, with Hadoop uh, like S3, uh, Microsoft's, and, uh, uh, Microsoft Azure's blob storage etc. Okay, and this is the uh, localizer address. So these are the parameters and these are the thresholds uh, uh, which will determine when they, they are supposed to be cleaned up and also I think there is a parameter which will control how many copies should be there um, um, but uh, this one is uh, in milliseconds so uh, after 600,000 seconds I think which is 10 minutes and the and data that is uh, in in this location Hadoop and local will be uh, terminated okay and uh, 10 minutes or 100 minutes I'm not sure uh, uh, how many minutes will be uh, will make a 600,000 milliseconds and also there is a size based uh, parameter also it's 10 GB so if it can, uh, uh, reaches 10 GB the old files will be uh, deleted so whenever this threshold is reached uh, it will try to uh, uh, delete the old data so in a uh, in a very large cluster, uh, probably uh, sorry if if you if you require certain data set in uh, more frequent uh, running jobs, uh, probably you might have to increase um, these thresholds a little bit. And how you actually add these files, um, either by passing uh, minor, uh, using minus files control argument as part of Hadoop jar command. Uh, or you can actually set uh, a, a job API method uh, which is called as add cache files and you can actually uh, pass the files directly uh, using these uh, uh, methods add cache files and set cache files so, uh, corresponding to files we have archives and these are the uh, corresponding uh, uh, methods as part of the job configuration similar is the case with libjars so files can be pushed to map reduce framework using my, uh, minus files option from command line. These files can be local to client, can live on HDFS or Hadoop readable file system like S3. When job is launched, these files will be pushed to HDFS and task tracker will load these files to its local directory before starting mappers or reducers. So by now our uh, VM came up. So let me connect to my VM. Okay, now I am inside the VM. So if you, so this is the local file system, Hadoop, local. Hadoop yarn local. This is the default location uh, which I am using. And in this, you can see that there are three directories, file cache, user cache and NM private. User cache will be the location where you will have um, the files. Okay, yeah. Whatever user you try to run, uh, you, you try to use to run the MapReduce jobs, that uh, there will be a directory for each of those users, uh, OS user, and then. In this, there is a file cache and app cache directories, and I think file cache is the one where the files will be copied. So these are my previous runs because it does not reach the 10 GB uh, threshold. It is still keeping those files, and you can see that when I actually uh, validated uh, 
um, for uh, demonstration purposes i have passed this company list no underscore no header dot csv and whenever i run the job um, at that moment this is october 25th which is a couple of days back there was a directory created for th for that run and that has this company list underscore no header dot csv as part of the cache okay so this is how you can uh, uh, this is how this file will be distributed if you have a multi node cluster each node will have uh, a location like this Hadoop yarn local then user cache then the user using which you are running um, uh, the MapReduce job and then a file a subdirectory called file cache and uh, another subdirectory with uh, each of the uh, with, with each of the um, uh, with each run and that will have uh, the corresponding CSV file uh, which is passed using minus files. Size of the cache on each data node is determined by, so this is the uh, classic uh, uh, parameter. With yarn, the directory is controlled by the parameter called yarn node manager local directories, which is Hadoop yarn local in this case. Okay, uh, steps to implement a distributed cache. Let me correct uh, this one uh, real quick. Okay, so now we'll talk about steps to implement distributed cache. We need to prepare metadata set uh, that needs to be passed as distributed cache. And then we have to write a parser class for the metadata, uh, which is optional. You can actually do it uh, as part of uh, the mapper itself. All the logic can be as part of the mapper itself. But as a good practice, you have to write a parser class. And then you have to run Hadoop BR command using minus files if you don't use the job API to set as part of your program. In the run function, you can use generic option parser to pass option passed using uh, built-in control arguments like minus files. In the latest versions, this is not required. It is automatically taken care uh, uh, by the framework itself. But I will try to demonstrate uh, generic options parser uh, when I actually uh, implement a distributed cache uh, as part of the next uh, MapReduce application. So in MapReducer, wherever you want to uh, use this uh, distributed cache, the file will be there in all the, uh, uh, wherever the mapper and uh, reducer tasks are running. But you should uh, build uh, some data structure where you can access this data easily. Hashmap is one such data structure, so we need to have the logic to build Hashmap so that we can look up uh, into the data set using the key. And we will take care of that as part of the uh, implementation to demonstrate uh, this distributed cache. So that's it. Uh, this is uh, about the theoretical aspect of distributed cache. And as part of uh, next few videos, we will try to see how this can be implemented by writing a end-to-end uh, -end MapReduce application. We will uh, continue um, uh, where we have stopped as part of the previous uh, applications and we will add on this distributed cache and it may take three, four videos uh, to complete it. That being said, I hope you are enjoying the content on my channel. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to provide feedback or ask any technical questions on distributed cache, feel free to use the comment section of the video. And if you have uh, uh, not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. You will get to see a lot more content like this over time. Thank you. Bye.